Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a cowl neck shrug. I've been feeling shrugs lately and for this one I decided to give it something I haven't done in a while, a cowl neck. Cozy, comfy, and covered is just how I like it. Speaking of, if you're looking to crochet something you'll like, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns you're sure to love with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 425 grams of yarn, and that is 650 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5.5 and, and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer in-ear headphones or over-the-ear headphones. I do like both, but as an overall device, I like the in-ear headphones. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. and half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small and you can adjust it for your size. We explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our five and a half millimeter hook and start off by making a chain that starts one inch underneath our underarm down to the top of our chest. Now I need about just an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain five. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started with our half double crochet row, and it's going to start with a decrease of two half double crochets. So let's all block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain, and now we're going to do our decrease. So yarn over, and into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to bring our hook down and insert, yarn over, pull through for three loops on our hook, and then into that following chain, insert, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. Now the decrease end is going to be the bottom of our piece, and we're going to be starting every odd number row with a decrease so we get the curve that we want. So to make sure that we don't get our rows confused with our even number rows, go ahead and insert a stitch marker into this bottom edge of this first row. Now from here, continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. We've put one half double crochet into every chain. We should all have one chain left, and into that last chain we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets. So yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that last chain, pull through, Yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do that again. Yarn over into that same last chain with a second half double crochet. And once more, yarn over into that same last chain with a third half double crochet. Now to get started on our following row, let's all chain two and flip our work. Now getting started on our even number rows, we're gonna start with an increase of three back loop half double crochets. So all together, yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop with one half double, into that same first stitch with a second half double, and then into that same first stitch with a third back loop half double crochet. And from here, we are going to put one back loop half double into every stitch. So yarn over, into that following stitch's back loop, insert pull through, pull through all three. Let's just do one more, yarn over, Next stitch is back loop, insert pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So our first two rows are finished. 
Now for this underarm portion for the front panel, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows, so let's just do the following two rows together. So chain two and flip our work. We're getting started on our row three, and since it is an odd number row, we're gonna start with a decrease of two, back loop, half double crochets. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, second stitch's back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one again. Our row three is nearly finished. We should all have one stitch left. So now let's close off our row three with an increase of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop with one, with two, and with three half double crochets. And to get started on our following even number row, we're gonna chain two and flip our work. And don't forget to insert your stitch marker into this decrease end. For every even number row, we're gonna start with an increase of three back loop half double crochets all into that first stitch's back loop. Right after our increase, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now our first one, two, three, four rows are finished. We're gonna continue on repeating our two previous rows until we get an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm. And then I'll meet you back right after an odd number row so we can work straight into our shoulder from there. We are back and I have just finished up my underarm portion. Now from here, we're going to do our shoulder portion. For my underarm, I ended up with a total of seven rows. This width is just about three inches or eight centimeters and we all should have ended along the top. So from here, we're all going to make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. I've already measured mine out. I needed just about four inches or 10 centimeters, so I made a chain of 15. Then after that, we're gonna be doing our half double crochet row. So from here, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Then from here, all we're gonna do is yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook and put one half double crochet into every chain. So we've put one half double crochet into every chain and all we're gonna do from here now that we're at the body is put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch till we don't have any more stitches left. We've made our way all the way down with our first shoulder row. And for the shoulder row, we are still gonna be doing the increases at the beginning of every odd number row. So from here, we're gonna chain two and flip our work. So now that we're here, we're going to yarn over, start off this row since this is an odd number row with a decrease. Don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the edge of this row and continue on with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and then since that is an even number row, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and that's it. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have a shoulder portion that can reach the base of our neck. And I'll meet you back right after an even number row or along the bottom so we can get started on the neckline from there. We're back and I have just finished up my shoulder portion. Now I have a total of 16 rows. My width is now seven inches or 18 centimeters and now we're going to do our neckline. So for the neckline portion, we actually aren't going to be doing any more decreases along the bottom, but that's just for the neckline portion. So what we're going to do from here is just insert our stitch marker into a stitch that's nearest to the base of our neck. And then since we should be along the bottom, we're just gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. All right, so we've just made our way all the way up with one back loop half double crochet until we've reached our stitch marker. All we're gonna do is continue with our back loop half double crochets until we have a portion that can reach across to the other side of the base of our neck. Remembering that we are not doing any increases or decreases along the bottom. I'll meet you guys back along the top or right after an odd number row so we can work straight into the shoulder from there. We are back and I have just finished up my neckline. I now have a total of 29 rows my width is now 12 inches or 31 centimeters. And now we're going to get started on our shoulder. So we're going to get started on our shoulder by making a chain since we all should have ended along the top for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. So for those of you that have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 10th stitch from the top. So from here, I made a chain 10. Then we're going to do a half double crochet row down. So chain two, flip our work, put one half double crochet into every chain and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. We have just finished up our first shoulder row. 
Now from here, we're going to continue on with our shoulder rows for the same amount of shoulder rows that we have on this side. But now, since we are along the second half of our piece, instead of doing the decreases to have it curve up towards the chest, we're actually going to be mirroring the side. So instead of decreases, we're going to be doing increases to have it curve down around our body. So at the beginning of every odd number row now, we're gonna start with an increase of two back loop half doubles. So since we should all be along the bottom, let's all chain two and flip our work. Getting started on our following odd number row, we're going to yarn over, insert into that first stitch with an increase of two back loop half double crochets. And since this is the shoulder portion, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And don't forget, since we are along this side of our piece, to insert your stitch marker into the edge of our increased rows as well, just to make it a little bit easier so we know what rows we need to increase into. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So every even number row is going to be one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Every odd number row is gonna start with an increase of two back loop half doubles and then one back loop half double into the rest of our stitches. We're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of shoulder rows as the first shoulder that we have. Once we have that, we should all end along the bottom and then I will meet you back so we can finish off our front panel with our second underarm. I am back and my shoulder portion is now all finished. I have a total of 38 rows. My width is now 16 inches or 41 centimeters. And now we're going to finish off our front panel with our underarm. So first things first, we're all going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to our shoulder. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch from the top because I made a chain 15 when we got started on our shoulder. And now from here, we're going to do our following row. So since we should all be along the bottom, we're going to start off our following row, which is an odd number row, with an increase of two back loop half double crochets, making sure to insert your stitch marker into the edge of that row, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving three stitches left right before our stitch marker. So we've made our way all the way up with our first underarm row. We should all have one, two, three stitches left before our stitch marker. And all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through into that second to last back loop, pull through and then into that last stitches back loop, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then just yarn over and pull through all five of those loops and our first underarm row is finished. Now we're gonna get started on our following row, which is an even number row with a decrease of three back loop half doubles again. So to get that started, let's all chain two and flip. So what we're going to do from here is yarn over, inserting your hook into that first stitches back loop, pull through, second stitches back loop, pull through and into that third stitches back loop, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook again, yarn over and pull through all five. And since this is an even number row, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and that's it. We're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows for the same amount of rows that we have for the other underarm portion. So just to let you guys know, every odd number row is gonna start with an increase of two back loop half doubles and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, ending off the row with a decrease of three back loop half doubles. Every even number row is going to start with a decrease of three back loop half doubles and one back loop half double crochet into every stitch from there. And once we have this underarm portion all finished up, I will meet you back. I am back and the entirety of my front panel is finished. Now just to make sure that we are all on the same page, the last row that we should have should have all ended on the same amount of chains that we made when we got started with our underarm. So since I made a chain five, I double checked and made sure that I had a total of five stitches here. Once we have that all figured out and finished up, we're now gonna get started on our back panel. So that's going to be done somewhat similarly to the front panel, but just a little bit easier. So getting started on the back panel, we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made when we got started on our underarm. So getting started on my front panel, I made a chain five. So getting started on my back panel, I made a chain five as well. I'm gonna block off that last chain and do a chain two. That does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And now we're going to yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. For the back panel, we are not gonna be doing any increases or decreases along the back. So just put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. And just to do the first one, we're gonna insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, pull through, pull through all three, and I'll meet you back when we all have just one chain left. When we all have just one chain left, we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets. 
sew yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitch with one half double, into that same last chain with a second half double, and then into that same last chain with a third half double crochet. That is our row one. Now getting started on our row two, that is gonna start with an increase of three back loop half doubles as well. So chain two and flip. So getting started on this row, insert into that first stitch's back loop with three back loop half doubles. So there's two, there is three for me, and then put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches for this row. From here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows. So every odd number row is gonna start with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch with an increase of three back loop half doubles into that last stitch. And every even number row is gonna start with an increase of three back loop half doubles and then one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. We're gonna to continue to repeat those two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as the front panel. And then I'll meet you back to get started on the width of the back from there. I'm back with the underarm portion for my back panel. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows because I had seven rows for my front panel. And now we're going to make the same chain that we made that reached all the way up to our shoulder for the front panel. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 15 there. So over here, I'm going to make a chain 15 as well. And from here, all we're gonna do is back loop half double crochet rows from mid collarbone across our back to mid collarbone. So all we're gonna do is chain two, flip our work, and into that chain that we blocked off with a third chain from our hook, insert with one half double crochet, and put one half double crochet into every chain. Once we reach the body, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again. Now, like I said, we're going to repeat our back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases from mid collarbone to mid collarbone. I'll meet you back along the bottom so you can work straight into our underarm from there. And just as a quick tip, we do want this to be just a few rows shorter than the front panel from our first shoulder row to our last. We want it to be just a little bit shorter so that the back doesn't buckle. All right, so I am back and the width of my back panel is all finished up. I have a total of 34 rows and my width is now 13 inches or 33 centimeters. But once we have the width of our back panel all finished up, all we're going to do is finish up with our underarm portion. So similarly to how we did the front panels underarm, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led up to our shoulder. I made a chain 15, so I inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch from the top. And from here, we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches before our stitch marker. So we're back, we have put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch for our first underarm row, leaving the last one, two, three stitches before our stitch marker. And now we're gonna do a decrease of three. So yarn over into that third to last stitch, pull through, second to last, pull through and into that last, there we go, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops, yarn over, pull through all five. And our following row is gonna start with a decrease of three as well to match the first underarm that we did for the back. So chain two and flip. Doing this decrease together again, yarn over into that first stitches back loop, pull through, second stitches back loop, pull through, third stitches back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all five loops on our hook, and put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches for this row. And all we're gonna do is continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as our underarm portion. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and I'm all finished up with my back panel. I have a total of 41 rows and my width is now 16 and a half inches or 42 centimeters. And now from here, all we're going to do is seam our front and back panel together. So let's place our front panel on top of our back panel. So we've just placed our front panel on top of our back panel and we're going to start by seaming our shoulders. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, all we're gonna do is alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's all start by finding our first side row within the front panel and insert in through that top loop. Find that first available side row into the back panel and insert in through that top loop. And if you don't want to weave in your tail ends, place them over your hook and single crochet around everything. Let's do the next one. 
this is my following side row. We're going to insert into that top loop within the front. Find our second side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop within the back, and single crochet. And we're going to be doing one more single crochet into both the front and back panel because this is our second half double crochet row. So this one should be a little bit easier since they all should be gathered. Just insert your hook into those same top loops within the front and back and single crochet. And that's it. We are going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row until we don't have any more side rows left to work into within the front panel. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, repeat on the other side for the shoulder, and then I will meet you back. We are back and our seam for the shoulders are all finished. Now we're going to seam our sides. So this is going to be another single crochet seam, so we are going to make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams that we did for the shoulders is along the outside. And then we're going to be inserting our same hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to single crochet into both the front and the back panel. So into that first stitch into the front panel, insert into that first stitch into the back panel insert and single crochet let's do this once more next stitch into the front panel insert next stitch into the back panel insert there we go and single crochet and continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into when we don't do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side we have just finished up seaming up our sides and we're ready to get started on our sleeves. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out now, meaning the seams that we just did is now along the inside. We are going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam and then we're going to do a single crochet row. So we should all have some side rows to work into first. We're just going to alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch and then make our way back down. So let's do the first few side rows together. So this is my first available side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook. Now I still don't want to weave in my end, so I'm going to take my tail ends that I have, place that over my hook and single crochet around everything. Let's do our following side row, which is this one right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there is one and then there is two. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we reach our stitches. Then we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch going up the shoulder and I'll meet you back once we reach the stitch that's right before our shoulder seam. Now once we have single crocheted our way all the way up to our shoulder seam, we're going to insert our stitch marker into the last stitch that we have on this side of our shoulder seam. And then also insert your hook into that following stitch that we're about to do. So into that first stitch that we have on the other side of our shoulder seam, we're going to insert with a single crochet and insert a stitch marker into there as well and continue with one single crochet into every stitch. Once we reach the side rows, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. We should have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers. Slip stitch into that chain space and then I'll meet you back. We're back and we have just finished up our single crochet row along our armhole and now we're going to get started on the length of our sleeve. So since we want the sleeve to be just a little bit comfier, we're going to switch out to our six millimeter hook. Then we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. I'd like for mine to be a full length sleeve, so pretty long. So I made a chain of 60 and that is 16 inches or 41 centimeters. And once we have our chain, we're going to do a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch. That is our turning chain. We're all going to yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double crochet and continue with one half double crochet into every chain leaving the last one so that we can increase together. We are back. I have just nearly finished my first sleeve row. We should all have one chain left and now we're going to do our increase of two half double crochets. So we're all going to yarn over, insert our hook into that last chain with one half double crochet and then into that same last chain with a second half double crochet. Now row one's complete. What we're going to do from here is slip stitch it into that next available stitch into the base. So this is my next available stitch right here. I'm just going to insert my hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. That slip stitch does not count as a stitch. So getting started on our following row, we're just going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base because we do need to work our way up to the following row. That slip stitch also does not count as a stitch and flip your work. 
Now into the stitches nearest to the base, we are always going to start with an increase of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over, into that last stitch from our previous row, not into those slip stitches. We're going to insert with two back loop half doubles, so there's one, there's two. And from here, we're going to continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And at the end of the row, we are going to chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one once more so we can increase and connect it into the base together again. We are back and we have our one, two, three rows nearly finished. Now what we're going to do from here, since we left the last stitch, is do our increase and connect it into the base together. So yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitches back loop with one back loop half double, and then into that same back loop with a second half double. And now we're going to slip stitch it into the base. So into that next available stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And then since we're here, might as well work our way up to the following row. So slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and we are going to start our following row with an increase of two back loop half doubles as well. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop with one half double, into that same back loop with a second half double. Then from here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we make our way all the way up to our stitch marker stitch. Then I'll meet you back so we can work on the second half of our sleeve. So we have made our way all the way up until we have reached our stitch marker. Now from here, we're going to repeat everything that we just did here, but instead of an increase of two into the stitches nearest to the base, we're going to be doing a decrease of two. So since I am along the base, I'm going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. So work my way up to the following row the same way that we've been doing and flip my work. For those of you that have ended along the outer edge, do a chain two, flip your work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches. Now since we all already know how to do a decrease of two, we're just going to do this quickly, yarn over, into that following stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through, into that following stitch's back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and just to do the following row together, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch to finish off this row. At the end of this row, chain two, flip our work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two, and then we can all do that decrease together as well. We are back and we've put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two. Now we're all going to do this decrease together. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last stitch's back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't have any more left to work into, I will meet you back so we can seam everything together. So we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our back loop half double crochet rows, and now we're going to seam it together. So this seam is going to be done exactly the same way as our side seam. So we're all going to make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out so all of our seams can be along the inside. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then all we're going to do is pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and just to do the first one, find that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and we have just finished up seaming the entirety of our sleeve. Now we're going to get started on our cuff. So first things first, we're going to flip our work right side out now, meaning the seam that we just made is now along the inside. Then we're going to be inserting our same six millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our sleeve. Then we're going to do a single crochet row to help cinch up our cuff. So let's all insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. Do a chain up of one to secure. And now all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every other side row. So all I'm going to do is find my first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert into that top loop with one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to skip that one. And then into my following side row, insert with another single crochet. Let's do that again skip the following side row, into the next, single crochet, skip the following, and single crochet into the next. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then we're going to slip stitch into that chain space when we don't have any more side rows left to work into. So we have made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. Next, we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. 
so I would like for mine to be roughly 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I went ahead and made a chain 12. Now once we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain 1. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch, so insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch, insert, and pull through everything. And continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise a falling row can be a little bit too tight to work into. We've put one slip stitch into every chain. Now from here, we're going to connect it into the base. So let's all start by finding that next available stitch. Into that stitch, we're going to insert with a slip stitch, and that does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. Now to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That also doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. So the way that we connect it into the base is the same exact way that we connected it into for the sleeve. And from here, we're just going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, we're just going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And make sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. From here, we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. And I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into so we can seam it all together. So we are back and we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together. And this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's all make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Then we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel. Insert your hook in through that front loop. Find that next available stitch into the back panel. Insert in through that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel. Insert your hook in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel. Insert in through that back loop. Pull through everything and that's it. This is going to look just like another back loop slip stitch row, so continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, the next thing we're going to do is our cowl neck. So right before we get started on the neck line prep, what we're going to need to do is insert our stitch marker into the middle row that we have within the front panel, and that's going to be where our hood meets. So all I did was found the first side row that I had on this side, first side row that I had on this side, and counted in one row on each side until I met my one middle row. For me, it was my seventh row, and I inserted my stitch marker into that top loop. Now from here, I'm going to flip my work over, and then insert my hook into one of my side rows along the back. So now that we have flipped our work over, we are going to insert our same 6 millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have for our neckline, and insert our yarn onto our hook. From here, we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Then all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side row, and then once we reach the front panel, one single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first one, we're going to find our first side row, this is mine right here, insert our hook in through there with one, and then into that same top loop with two single crochets. Let's do that again. Into that following side row, insert with one, into that same top loop with two single crochets. And that's it, we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. Now once we reach the front panel, we are going to want to maintain that middle row. So once we reach that side row, put two single crochets into there, just like how we did for these rows, and insert a stitch marker into each of those two stitches, because now we will have two middle stitches. I'll meet you back once we make our way all the way around. But another really quick tip, when you make your way all the way around, try on our piece, because this is going to be as wide as this neck hole can stretch. If it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. We are back, and we have just finished up our single crochet row. Now I just wanted to meet you guys back before we got on with the length of our cowl neck, that this is what our two middle stitches looks like. It's two single crochets into that middle row that we had our stitch marker into, and then into each of those stitches, which is worked into that side row, I inserted one stitch marker into each. Now let's turn our work over. Now looking at the back, we're going to be inserting our 6mm hook into any one of the stitches in that single crochet row that we just made, but we want to make sure that we're inserting our hook in through the back loop. Now for this part, we do want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out because we want to leave the front loops for the hood that we're going to do afterwards. So I'm going to find my first stitch, it doesn't matter which one, I'm just going to pick one, and insert only in through that back loop. Now from here, I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook. I'm going to pull through 
And from here, I'm going to make a chain the length that I'd like for my cowl neck to be. Now I want mine to be really long and for it to fold over, so I'm gonna make a chain of 30, and that's going to be six inches or 15 centimeters, but you guys can make this as short or as long as you would like. And now that I have my chain, I'm going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, I'm going to insert. When we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops. That is our first slip stitch, let's do the next one. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything, and again, into that next chain, insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And continue with one slip stitch into every chain, but remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise a falling row can be a little too tight to work into. So I've just made my way down with one slip stitch into every chain, and now we're gonna connect it into the base. Now I do still wanna leave those available front loops for the hood when we're ready to do that. So all I'm gonna do is find that next stitch's back loop, and that's on the side as the first loop that we'd insert our hook into. So insert your hook in through there with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And working our way up to the following row, we're gonna slip stitch into that following stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch either. That's just to work our way up to the following row and flip our work. And from here, we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, not those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert in through that back loop, pull through everything, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly. At the end of the row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and I'll meet you back at the base. And now that we made our way all the way down with our one, two, three rows, we're now gonna connect it into the base again. So into that next available stitch into the base, insert in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch, and then to work our way up to the following row, just like before, find that next available stitch, insert in through that back loop, none of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch, flip our work, and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases, until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And we just wanna make sure that once we're making our way all the way around, that we leave our two middle stitch markers into those middle stitches, so we know where the two middle stitches are for when it comes to doing our hood. So we are back, we have made our way all the way around, with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more left to work into, so now let's seam it all together, and then we can get started on our hood. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Next, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and this is going to be the same seam as our cuffs, so another outside loop slip stitch seam. So let's all make sure that our work is flipped right side out. So just to do the first one, we're all gonna find that first stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, first stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop. Then we're all going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And that's it, we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So we are back, our cowl neck is all finished. Now we're gonna get started on our hood and it's going to be pretty simple. So we're gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side up, right side out. And we're going to insert our hook into one of our stitch marker stitches, we should have two, doesn't matter which one. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and start with a chain two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, we just want the height, and we're just going to put one half double crochet into every stitch that we left available for ourselves, making our way all the way around. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, pull through, pull through all three. And then into that following stitch, we should have all these ridges left. Into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's it. Continue with one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our following stitch marker on the other side. So we are back and our first half double crochet row is all finished. We have made our way over to our other stitch marker stitch. And all we're gonna do from here is back loop half double crochet rows until this reaches the top of our head and then we're just gonna seam it up. So all we're going to do from here is chain two, flip our work and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around and then repeat. Our hood isn't going to have any increases or decreases. So I'll meet you back once when this can reach over to the top of our head and then I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. All right, so we are back 
and we have just finished up the height of our hood. I have a total of 29 rows, and that height is just about 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters, and now we're ready to seam everything together. So we do need our work to be flipped wrong side out because the seam is going to be a single crochet seam, so it will be along the inside, but instead of flipping the entire thing inside out, all we're gonna do is pinch the corner stitches together, grab the inside of our hood, pull that middle part through, and then flip our corners so that they're not twisted, and then we can do our single crochet seam. We're all going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then all we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through everything, and let's do the first one together. Find our first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our hood, and now we're going to single crochet along our hood just to clean up the edge. So all we're going to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're going to insert our hook into that first stitch that one side of our hood is in, or our stitch marker stitch if you left those in. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook and pull through. And all we're gonna do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, all the way up and around. So let's all start by finding that first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna weave in my tail ends as I go, so I'm gonna place that over my hook and insert with one single crochet. Now into my following side row, I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop with two single crochets. So there's one into that same top loop with a second single crochet. And that's it, we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up and over. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, we are going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base and then do a chain up of one and cut. So we are back, we have just finished up the single crochet along our hood and now we're just going to clean up the bottom of our piece as well. So making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, we are going to insert our five and a half millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the back insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and just like for the hood, just alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way around. When we make our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space. We are back and we have just finished up the first single crochet row for cleaning up the bottom, and we're just gonna be doing one more single crochet row. So all we're gonna do after we slip stitch into that chain space, we're going to chain one, and working in the same direction as our previous row, we're going to put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, and that's it. Well, we don't have any more stitches left, slip stitch into this chain space and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. All of those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!